Hello and welcome to the first GIMP Light Effects tutorial. So in this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to use and customize the 77 light effects that you downloaded previously. So these overlays, these light effects are not going to work perfectly for every single image you have because they are not going to be either the right size or the right color or even in the right position in relation to the direction of light in your image. So I'm going to show you with these three images right here that I took at Letchworth State Park last year. We're going to use three different overlays so I can show you all the different ways that you can customize these to get a natural looking overlay or light effect on your images. So for this particular image, I'm going to use overlay number 18. So I'm going to click and drag this over the canvas to add that as a new layer. So one of the first things you're going to want to do is remove all this black so you can see the image below it. So let's go up to mode and select screen. Now I haven't included these images because these are all copyrighted and you don't need these images to learn how to customize these individual light effects. Everything you learn can be applied to your own images. So take your knowledge and apply it to those images that you're working on. Okay, so with the move tool, I'm going to click and drag it into position so it lines up with where the sun is in the image. Now, the other thing I want to mention is your overlay might look slightly different, and that's because I've turned off my layer boundary, which is this outer square right here. It kind of gets in the way, so I like to have that turned off. So just go up to view, click on show layer boundary to hide it. All right, now that we have it in position, we should match the color of the light effect with the underlying image, which is yellow to orange, which is typical for golden hour, which is images shot at sunrise or sunset and around a half an hour to an hour before or after. So right now that sun effect is more on the red to white side. So I want to change that color and you can do that by going up to colors and selecting hue saturation. Just adjust the hue slider here according to what you need. And I'm going to go over to the right here to get that yellow orange color. And then I'm going to increase my saturation to add more color or make that color a lot more vibrant than it is or was before. So something like that looks pretty good. And then if you want to darken that, you can do that as well with lightness. All right. So now that I'm happy with that, I'm going to go ahead and click OK. And I'm going to use my opacity option here to help that blend in a little bit more. I don't want it to be completely solid. It should allow the layer or the detail underneath to come through, which is going to help it look a lot more natural. So something like that looks pretty good. The other thing is I want to change the opacity of just this area right here. And we have to use our gradient tool in order to do that. But first we need to add what is known as a layer mask. So if you come down here and click here, you can add a layer mask to the layer that you have selected in the layers panel. So I'm going to select white. And once I click add, you're going to see this little white square right here. And anything in white is going to show the details or the pixels of that layer. Anything in black, will remove or hide those pixels. So if we come over here and set our foreground color here to black by either clicking on this box here or just click on these little two smaller squares and that will switch it to black. And then when you grab your paintbrush tool and paint with black, it will then remove the pixels that you've painted on. And if you take a look at your layer mask now, you can see that it is black in that area. I'm going to undo that with Command or Control plus the letter Z. The other thing I like to do when I'm painting with black or white, because I can paint with white as well to add it back, I also like to set my hardness to zero so I have a nice feathered edge. All right, so I'm not going to use my brush. Instead, I'm going to use my gradient tool, which is inside of this paint bucket list right here. So if we right click, we can select our gradient from here. To choose our gradients, we're going to click right here and I'm going to select this first one. And I'm going to go ahead and switch my foreground and background colors here. 
Now, before you apply your gradient, you wanna make sure you have the correct shape selected, which you can find under shape right here. So we want a linear type of gradient. And then when I click and drag out, it will then remove the pixels above this line here. Or if I click right here, it's going to switch it. I'm gonna go ahead and grab this line and bring it in a little bit tighter like so. And that just makes these rays right here shorter than the rest or compared to where they were before. And I'm gonna go ahead and click enter or return to apply that. Now for me, I still find that the light effect is still too intense. I wanna tone that down just a little bit more to try and create a more natural type of light effect. And I think by lowering the opacity, I achieved that. All right, so that was a pretty easy and simple light effect to customize. Let's take a look at our next image here and let's take a look at another scenario where you need to make sure you're choosing the right type of light overlay. And that's based on the direction of the light. So if we take a look at the clouds here, we can see the right side of the clouds are darker. The left side is much brighter. So we wanna make sure that the rays of light is coming from that direction. If we put them over here and we have rays going this way, then it's going to look fake or unnatural. So for this image, I'm gonna add some sun rays and I'm going to select number 64. Now, some of these down here are going to look very similar, like this one and 69, but they are different. This one is pure white. So if you want white, I would go with this, but if you wanna change the colors of the rays, to something else, then you're going to need this one here in this case, because it has yellow tints added to it. So let's go ahead and take a look at how we can use this and colorize it as well. So I'm gonna click and drag this one over, and I want this to be the same size as the canvas. So the first thing I need to do is resize it, or maybe I should flip it since the rays are on this side and they should be over here. So let's do that first. So let's go up to layer, down to transform and select flip horizontally to flip it to the other side. Now it matches the direction of the light with the original image. I'm gonna go ahead and change the mode to screen and then I'm going to resize it to the size of the original canvas. So let's check out what that is. I'm gonna go up to image and select canvas size and I have a width of 5,821. It doesn't have to be exactly that same size. I like it a little bit larger, so I'm gonna go up to layer and select scale layer, which will allow you to scale that layer larger or smaller if needed. So I'm gonna to go to 5,900 for the width. I'm gonna click scale, and now it fills up that canvas very nicely. So I'm gonna go ahead and grab my move tool now and move it over a little bit. So something like that, maybe drop the opacity down a little bit. And let's say you want to try and match the colors in the scene a little bit better. And the yellow in the light effects overlay doesn't really match at this time. So let's go up to colors and down to colorize to change the colors. And just like that, we have a new color. Again, it doesn't match. So we can click on this little color box here to go inside and pick the color that we want. It's kind of a yellow to orange to maybe a purple color. So what you could do in that case is I would maybe duplicate the layer and add two colors and try and get them to blend together. Now, if you change the color to something lighter like I did, it's going to show the underlying part of that light effect or that black area that we removed. So I would recommend coming in with a very dark color to make sure that that coloring on the rest of the rays or that layer doesn't show through like I showed you with a brighter color. So I don't think I really want purple for this one. I'm gonna go in and choose this dark orange color here. And you can also see it's starting to change the color of the clouds as well. So you just need to fine tune the colors to match the colors of the scene. This one's kind of difficult because there are a few different colors inside of here, but I think yellow to orange would probably be best because of the time of day that I shot this at. And then you can go ahead and adjust the opacity as needed. If you want to blend two different colors together, you can take this layer here and duplicate it by clicking on this icon here. And then you can go in and colorize this particular layer with a different color. And that will give you a secondary color 
based on the one that you choose. So maybe an orange one here, we need to go darker again. Actually, I used that before. So maybe a little bit brighter or maybe a bluish color. All right, so for this last image, I'm gonna show you how to rotate and transform your sunlight overlays to customize them even further. So I'm gonna use number 31 here, and I'm gonna go ahead and scale this layer up under scale layer again. So let's do 3800 for this one. I'm going to change the blend mode again to screen. And we have a big problem right now. So we have this hard edge right around the outer edge of the layer boundary. And to get rid of that, we are going to use our layer mask, but we're gonna do that last. I wanna go ahead and get this into position first with my move tool. So right about there. And I wanna kind of bend this or arch it a little bit. So it's kind of, these points here are kind of going in towards the sun a little bit. So we can do that with our transform tools. So if you right click on this icon here, you'll see all these different tools, but the one we want is unified transform. And when you click on that and then click on your image layer or your light effect layer, you're gonna see these little squares and diamonds on the outside. So I actually want to move this over so I can access this one and this one here. So I'm gonna click on the inside of the square or the diamond, and that will allow me to bend or transform that to change the perspective of the light effect. And I'm gonna bring this one in, and now we have a completely new perspective with that slight change. And then from here, you can increase the size as well. And if you click on the outer edge here, you can rotate as well. Now clicking anywhere on the inside other than the center here, you can then put that into position or move it into position. With enter or return, you can then apply that transform and then move it back into position as needed with your move tool. All right, I may wanna rotate this a little bit more, so I'm gonna come back up here and right click and select my rotate tool. I'm gonna to click on the light effect and then I can move my mouse up and down to rotate it as needed. I'm gonna go ahead and click enter or return to apply that. Now to get rid of this hard edge requires applying a white layer mask. I'm going to grab my brush tool. I'm going to increase my brush size a little bit more. I just wanna cover a larger area. And the other thing to do is change the hardness, which is usually set at 50 and you wanna set that to zero, which is going to give you a nice soft edge. So I'm gonna click up here. I can kind of see that line right there. And then I'm just gonna continue with one stroke painting around this area without trying to remove that light effect and those colors. So I'm just gonna continue going around the side here until I get rid of all of the hard edges. All right, let's go back to this image here, and I wanna show you one more type of light effect that you can apply and how to customize it. So if we take a look inside of our resources folder here that you downloaded, you have three light leaks and some light prisms inside of here with multiple effects. So there's five different layers inside of here, and if you take a look at the file format, we have XCF, which is the file format for GIMP, for saving files with layers. So if I click and drag Light Leak 3 over to this image, it will add it and it will show that there's multiple layers here. So the first layer here is a grouped layer where I place those layers inside and I'll show you how to create these in an upcoming tutorial. Now, one of the things you're gonna notice with this particular light effect is that it's very small compared to the image canvas itself. So we're going to upscale it, but sometimes that creates a problem with pixelization, and I'm gonna show you how to fix that as well. So let's go up to view and click on show layer boundary to hide that. And I want to rotate this because I don't want this diagonal line here. It doesn't have to be perfectly straight, but I'm just gonna try and align this the best I can. So right there looks good, enter or return. And we're going to make this very large now. So we're gonna go up to layer, scale layer, and I'm going to do 7,500 pixels wide, and it might take a few seconds to do this. It could take more or less time depending on the speed of your computer, 
And the larger you go, the more time it's going to take. So it's going to take a few seconds here to resize that. And it doesn't look like I made it large enough. So I'm going to go up and do that one more time. Let's go to 10,000 pixels. I just want to make sure that that layer covers top to bottom of the original image layer. All right, that looks good. I'm going to go ahead and grab the move tool with the letter M and I'm going to move it over here to the right. So now we have a light lake that was reminiscent from the days of past when we shot film. If you've ever shot film, you probably had this type of experience with your images before. If not, that's a pretty cool, fun effect to apply to your images. All right, so by importing a file that already had layers, I really don't have to do too much because I've already applied the blend modes to these layers. And this time I used two different kinds, overlay and grain extract. So later on in this course, you're going to learn why I selected these and how you can apply different blood modes for different effects. All right, so the last thing I want to share with you is how to fix any type of artifacts or pixelization that can occur when upscaling a light effect to a larger size. So what we need to do is we need to make sure that we have the layer thumbnail selected, not the layer mask, but the layer thumbnail right here. And we want to make sure that the one that is selected is the one that we want to fix, because if we select the group layer, that's not going to work. It has to be the individual layer. All right. Once you have that selected, you're going to go up to filters, blur, Gaussian blur, and you're going to add a little bit of blur to that layer with the range of around five to 10 for the size. And once you click OK, it will then blur that layer or the pixels of that layer that you selected. We also need to do it for the second layer as well, but this time, when we go up to filters, we can click on repeat Gaussian blur, which will apply the same amount of blur that was used previously. All right. Now that you know how to use the included light effects in the upcoming tutorials, you're going to learn how to customize and create your own light effects.